Let's talk a little bit about your AKA brother Khabib because they did the big press conference between him and Conor McGregor this past week. Did you get a chance to watch it? And what did you think of all the craziness? I watched a bit of it on the mm. uh, on my drive to practice. Um, mm -hmm. It is uh, it, it is what it is. I think there's obviously somewhat of a communication barrier, but but Khabib gets his point across. He's composed. You can see his demeanor. I'm not worried that. Connor is Connor's Connor. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's he's selling it, man. He's he's uh, he's he's on the brink of insanity, and I fucking it, it's awesome. But you know, uh, this is a different kind of fight, and we'll see we'll see what's up, man. They're both they're both dangerous in their own realms, but uh, you know, I, I like Khabib and, and where he's coming from and how he can attack this fight. So I'm excited to see it. It's funny. I was I was watching the press conference, thinking like um, I'm sure Khabib doesn't love this moment. You know, sort of having to, you know, engage English being his second language. But regardless, it's it's gonna what the work that Connor's doing now. It's gonna make him both a lot of money. How do you think? Sort of, you know him better than than you know we do or anyone does. How do you think he took some of those things that Connor said? You know, mentioning you know Katerov and his people and and Connor sort of really doing his research. How how do you think he sort of wore all those things and and did it affect him in any way? Um, Khabib's a pretty smooth character. He doesn't really let a lot affect him. I think you all can see that. Uh, Connor, Connor always does his homework. He always does his shit, and uh, he's always going to be himself. So, uh, but the fight, the fight, the fight. The man can fight. He can only not only talk. He does fight, and he is precise. He is he is dangerous, and so, and we all know Khabib can can do his thing. He's mm -hmm. twenty six and zero now. I mean, that's it's it's an unheard of thing. The guy's never lost. So. Uh, Connor's lost multiple times. Uh, Khabib is dangerous. Anybody can lose, but uh, you know we'll, we'll see what happens. If Khabib gets a hold of him, it's a different world. You can't you can't tussle with somebody who's grappled like that his whole life. I've grappled I've grappled with a lot of 55 pounders in the world, and not one not one can give me the go that Khabib has. How, how, mm. how, what, sorry, sorry to cut in there. How, how what kind of weight does he feel like to you? Because you've like you know guys like Josh Thompson, other lightweights. You know, if, if they feel like lightweights, what does Khabib feel like? Does he feel close to a, a, a middleweight to you? <clears throat> Khabib is, uh, he, he's, he's up there, man. He's, he's not, he's, he obviously doesn't have the exact size of, of me as a bigger middleweight, but he's, he's strong as an ox. He doesn't give up. Uh, the kid, he just, he's relentless and he won't give up. I mean, I, I play with 55 pounders. Khabib is, is a, is a real go. And there's no, absolutely no quitting him. He will, he will go to the, to the bitter end. He will go to his death. He has mm. to. I've, uh, I've taken him as far as I can ever believe, and, and he just keeps coming. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he, the guy does not. He won't. He will not tap to anything. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's a true fighter. Jesus, Jesus, he's a bit of a terminator there. I, mean, I know you mentioned that next week. He said you're gonna. Go somewhere. So you won't be at UFC 229 because I know you were there when the, obviously Daniel Cormier had that massive win and you were there in the octagon. Will you be there for Khabib's fight with McGregor or are you obviously preparing for your big fight at MSG and won't be able to make it this time around? I am I am preparing for the fight, but we have some uh, some complications. So we'll see. I don't know. I might be out there training. I'm trying to decipher what the best training situation is for me right now. So, yeah, because we'll be there, you know, so a good training <laughs> session could be having a few beers with the boys from Australia and uh, talking if you need about incentive. some old war stories off record, you know. So. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, if you want to get ready, really ready for Chris Weidman, you might have to do that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll drink some uh, some whiskey, right? Of course. Ah. Rob, Rob, Rob out there with you boys. Nah, Rob I Black's think I'm gonna, I, might, I might have to play it safe out here in Florida. So I'm going to go to Cali. I'm going to get a couple of days of training with AK and Khabib this weekend. Uh, but it looks like I'm looking back here. Hmm. Well, I wanted to ask you also, we'll let you go in a moment, but um, you, you talking about Kelvin Gastelum before, who do you think wins between him and Robert Whitaker? How do you see that fight potentially playing out? Because that that is potentially the guy that you might be facing next, whoever wins. It's an interesting matchup. You know, Whitaker can't. Kelvin's quick, and, and so it's going to be you know, a striking match. And they're both they're both pretty good on the feet. Um, when Kelvin Kelvin breaks mentally, um, if you pressure him, he put it on him. And so 
What a great... Ah, I don't, I don't know, man. It's gonna be a good fight. We'll <laughs> see. It, uh, I, I favor Whitaker, but but Kelvin is Kelvin is dangerous on the feet if you play that game with him all, all the time. So we'll see if uh, if Whitaker can expand his game and and try to implement some takedowns and different things to, to throw him off. He, Whitaker's got a kicking game too, so you know anything can land. Mm. Well, finally, the most prediction, the most important prediction of all. What's your prediction for November third? How are you beating Chris Weidman at UFC two thirty? Round two. Round two. So, so half the time as last time, correct? Uh, should have been done in round three last time. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's true. So, round two for this one. <laughs> There you go, guys. Luke Rockhold versus Chris Weidman. A very enticing rematch at UFC 230 on November the 3rd because the time difference is going to be November 4th here in Australia New Zealand, uh, but it will be at the iconic Madison Square Garden. Follow the man on Twitter and Instagram, at Luke Rockhold. And, of course, if you want to smell delicious, check out the Ralph Polo, uh, Ruffler and Polo Blue range. Uh, probably wearing some of it right now. Just quickly, anything anything new and exciting coming out in the world of Ralph, uh, Ralph Lauren for you, Luke? I think I've covered the map so far. I have it all. <laughs> Everything. I have, a, I have a fragrance underwear and shirt. So, um, <laughs> we're out flooring at the moment. But we got we got good things. I'm always I'm always working. I got a lot of stuff on there. And it works. But most importantly, we're putting away Chris Weidman, Madison Square Garden. That's all it is. All it is. There you go. Thank you so much, Luke, for your time. Always appreciate it. And I uh, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much, Luke. Later, boys.